So let us continue our talk, our uh, meeting. So, and our ne next speaker will be Wilma Stotik uh, from Seget University. Yes. And he will speak about multiplicity of zeros of polynomials. So, very good. Come on, Wilma. <coughs> Uh, thank you for the invitation and greetings for everybody. And I should share my screen, right? I'll hear it. Is it okay now? Okay, yes. Just make a full screen. I try control L, it doesn't work. Okay. Uh -huh. Do you, yes. Is it okay? Can you see? Beautiful, yes. All right. Uh, so again, thank you for the invitation and I wish I could be there. Um, so let me start with Chebyshev's theorem. Uh, we will talk about, or I will talk about uh, uh, polynomials always with uh, leading coefficient one, which sometimes we say monic polynomials. So the first coefficient is one. And PN will always mean an, an n-degree polynomial. And I just use supremum norm everywhere. Everywhere is supremum norm. Now, uh, the, I would say the origin of approximation theory is Chebyshev's theorem, right? Which says that uh, in this situation, the norm of PN on minus one, one is always two times one over two to the n. Uh, so what about uh, if we consider other, other sets, not minus one, one? To this, I need the notion of logarithmic capacity or transfinite diameter. And so let uh, K be a, a set on the complex plane and you choose n points from K and you maximize this product you know, all the product of all the distances between the points and it, taking n times n minus first root and then this limit exists and this is called the capacity of k of transfinite diameter uh, faculty introduced this way so examples the capacity of a line segment of l is l over four in particular the capacity of minus one one is one half that is why in chebyshev's theorem you had we had one over two to the n that of a circle or a disc of radius r is I will use this notion. I mean, I'm... Uh, get around it anyway. So the general Chebyshev theorem: if p n is a monic polynomial, then the norm of this uh, polynomial on k is at least always as large as the and power of uh, capacity. And uh, that's, that's exact. If K is the unit circle and P and Z is Z to the N, then, then the norm of this polynomial on the unit, this, or the unit circle is one, which is exact the end power of the capacity. So you cannot do better than that. Uh, if you, if you have a set on the real line, then uh, it improves to two times capacity to the uh, uh, power n. That is, uh, the norm in this case is always larger by a factor two. And that's sharp again if, if k is minus one, one, and we just look at the Chebyshev polynomial, then the norm is exactly two to the one, uh, one, uh, uh, two times uh, the n power of the capacity, two times one half to the power n. So now let me go back to uh, the erdos turan discrepancy theorem. Um, it, it says, well, Erdős and Turan wrote uh, for, uh, for years, that is for polynomials with real zeros. Later this, we can get rid of this assumption. Anyway, so uh, what, what it says the following, um, 
that we look at the norm of the polynomials on minus one, one, so all the zeros are real, and look at the number of zeros in an interval, subinterval of minus one, one. The number of zeros is here, and we divide by n, so this is the relative frequency of the zeros in the interval a, a b, and we compare it with the, the, the value of the Chebyshev distribution, uh, Chebyshev measure on, on this interval a, b. So this is the, you know, the arc sign distribution and, and estimate the difference. This is why it's called discrepancy theorem. So estimate the distance and the, uh, and the difference and the difference is governed by uh, the log of this two to the n times the, the norm over n square root. Uh, an immediate corollary uh, is that if we look at the multiplicity of a zero of pn, then it is less than or equal a constant times a similar expression, but now n is up here. Why? Because if if a is a zero of, of pn of multiplicity m, then I choose here b equal a. So this is a, a degenerate interval. So here I have the number of, of zeros equal to a, so the multiplicity by, by n. This is zero, and this is less than this one. And then when I multiply through by n, I get it. This inequality. So the multiplicity of, of zero of Pn is governed by by the norm, by the norm of the of the polynomial. And Edus and Turan, uh, so this is this is their estimate. Now let me write this instead of two to the n times Pn, the norm of Pn as Pn, the norm of Pn divided by two to the n. It will be clear later why. And in particular, if the norm uh, on minus one one is, is uh, of the order two to the minus 10, like in, Chebi in the Chebyshev case, in the, for the Chebyshev polynomials, that is the order, then the largest multiplicity is at most square root 10, because then this, this factor is a constant or bounded. So the largest multiplicity is, is just square root of 10. And Erdős and Turan wrote that uh, we are in the, of the opinion that there is this polynomial of degree n which has somewhere uh, min in minus one, one a root of square root n, and yet uh, uh, this is true. So two to the n times the polynomial is bounded. And while uh, the Erdős Turan discrepancy theorem has been used a lot, uh, Andrievsky and Blatt wrote even a book on it. Uh, this this problem of Erdős and Turan was forgotten, basically. So I, uh, the motivation of my talk is, is about this this problem. So multiplicity and general set. So now let K be a set uh, on the plane, and in this case, the multiplicity of this should be governed by the norm of uh, of the polynomial on K divided by the nth power of the capacitor like in the, in the case of interval minus one, one. But there is a problem here. Uh, look at, at z to the n on, on the unit circle. Here z equals zero is, the, is of multiplicity n. There is nothing higher than that. But the norm of uh, divided by the capacity is one, and there is nothing smaller than that. So you cannot bond n by one, right? I mean, in a sensible way. So in this case, you should be careful. But here uh, the, uh, the catch is that this zero is inside this, this in the interior of, of, of the, or uh, in, in, inside this, this circle. So, so in this case, you cannot say too much. Now, so I will consider uh, the situation when K is the union of disjoint uh, smooth Jordan curves or arcs, you know, a curve is like uh, the is, is has uh, is is a homomorphic image of the of, of a circle, and an arc is a homomorphic image of an of a, a segment. 
So I, I allow both of them. And uh, we take the complement of K and as usual we denote by omega the unbounded component of, of K. And now that the theorem is a, a rather general theorem that if you consider a, a monic polynomial then the multiplicity M of N is zero but only in, in omega. So we cannot allow the zero to lie um, inside in, in some sense of K. So uh, the multiplicity has to be, uh, yeah, well, I can allow, of course, here, not just omega, but the closure of omega. So I should have written here the closure of omega. So either on K or in the complement, uh, unbounded component of K. So the multiplicity is governed by uh, the same expression as before, square root of n times the log of this fraction. And now I compare the, the norm with the nth power of the capacity. So this is uh, this is the the inequality that I just stated. Um, I I write it in that form that uh, just rearranging this that the the norm is at least as large as uh, this an exponential factor built up from the multiplicity and the degree times the n power of the capacity. You recall that. Uh, uh, Without this factor, this was a general inequality, right? The the Fekete Sege theorem that the norm is always at least as large as the cap nth root of capacity. Now this inequality says that if we have a, a multiplicity some a, a zero with high multiplicity somewhere, then the norm should be much larger, right? If m is large, then this is large. And uh, this has a converse. So let K be, but uh, I have only a converse only for one uh, curve, which also have to be uh, very small. Uh, so let K be an analytic Jordan curve or arc, and let Z and B prescribe points and M and uh, prescribe multiplicities. Then there are polynomials with leading coefficient one such that this prescribed uh, point is a zero of Pn of multiplicity of the given multiplicity Mn. And the norm of Pn on, on, on the set is bounded by a constant times this expression here with a different constant times the n power of the capacity. Now it will be important later that for Jordan curve, that is for uh, homeomorphic images of the of this of a circle, here A is one. And for a Jordan arc, we, I can set uh, A equal to. So uh, that's for Jordan arcs, you cannot put here A equal one, but for a curve, you can have one, and for arcs, it will be two. This doesn't seem to be important, but it, it's actually important later. So um, with this, uh, we can easily give the solution to the Erdős Turan problem because. You know, we have this bound for the um, for the norm if, if k is minus one one and m n is just uh, square root of n, then the norm of p n will be bounded by a constant times the power capacity of minus one one, which was one half to the power n. So the norm will be bounded by this uh, expression. And still, Pn has a zero of multiplicity square root n. So this this was the forgotten question of Erdős and Turan. Now the idea of the construction. So uh, first of all, K is an analytic. Uh, let, let me just talk about a uh, Jordan curve. Um, uh, so we need to construct a polynomial such that a given point is a zero of Pn with a given multiplicity. M, and still we have such such a bound. Uh, now, if, know that if the multiplicity is literal square root of n, then this this expression here in the exponent is literal one, 
So then this PN satisfies that, you know, uh, then its norm has to be bigger than the n power of the capacity. On the other hand, from the right side, we have that it's not much larger. It's one plus really one times the n power of the capacity. Now, uh, it's, uh, the problem is, is, is actually um, more general. I mean, it's, it's not that easy to construct polynomials uh, with a small norm, and we here we also I, I have to to uh, ensure relatively high multiplicity or a given multiplicity. So I, we will show that uh, um, there is no such construction for more than one component. Only one 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 component is is possible. Uh, so the idea of the construction it goes back uh, the the main. Uh, uh, idea is, is due to Hollas, who who uh, he was working in in uh, number theory, and he needed uh, polynomials with co leading coefficient one, which vanish at one. Uh, but on the unit circle, the norm is 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 relatively small, so it's uh, less than e to two over k, where k is the the uh, the degree. Now, um, using this, it's easy to construct a, a polynomial, similar polynomial, where the norm uh, is a little uh, worse, but uh, the polynomials tend to zero geometrically fast inside that uh, inside the unit circle. You just apply this this Hollas theorem with k over two degree k over two and multiply uh, through by z to k over two. That will do. So that's it. Now, if we uh, if phi is a conform is a conform map from the exterior of uh, of k exterior domain of k onto the exterior of c one, so on exterior of the unit disk, such that uh, it takes the point z uh, z zero into one. And as k star is the polynomial part of this expression, so I put into qk this polynomial qk, this conformal map, and take the polynomial part, like in, in Faber, in the Faber construction. Then, uh, and I have to make sure that z0 is a zero, so I have to subtract this value. Then this polynomial will satisfy this bound. That's relatively easy to check. Same, I, I mean, this uh, the Faber idea works. That's why I need it here, analyticity. And uh, in general, um, so I need multiplicity M. So what, what I do is I, I take this construction, which I, I described, and apply with degree N over M and take M power. Then, uh, you know, this polynomial had a zero at Z zero, I apply to M power. I will have a multiple a, a zero. Z, Z zero will be a, of mod, a zero of multiplicity M, and the norm of P N will be just. I have to take the nth power of this expression, where k is n over m. So what I have here is, uh, you know, five over n over m times the capacity of the n to the power m, and that's exactly the expression we need. You know, the m squared comes in in this exponentiation. Now, uh, so we have seen that if k is a, a, a Jordan curve and p n has a zero of multiplicity m, then the norm has to be at least this large. And conversely, for analytic curves, there are polynomials p m with a zero of multiplicity p m with this um, bounded norm. You know, here there is no constant in front, so this is this is uh, matching. Of course, this constant is different than this. Now, this this converse doesn't hold for more than one component. Imagine if m is a, a little o square root one over n, then this is little o one. So this is just almost one, this, this factor. And when there are more than one component, then there are no polynomials whatsoever, uh, monic polynomials for which the norm is uh, at most one plus really one times the n power of the capacity. This goes back to Widom and maybe even before that to, 
uh, are here. Right? So there are no 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 such polynomials. So here really we, we just we have this inequality for only for one uh, component. And also smoothness is needed. I use some kind of C1 plus smoothness, a little more than C1, but some kind of smoothness is, is needed for um, because if uh, given any theta between zero and one, then there is a Jordan curve K. So that for infinitely many n, there is a polynomial um, with leading coefficient one that has a zero on k of multiplicity n to the k, so a large uh, multiplicity, and and still for those n, you know, we have n uh, the the uh, the norm is at most one plus zero one times the n power of the capacity. Now recall that for smooth curves, in in such cases we had this this uh, lower bound. That is, in this case, the when k is smooth, the norm has to be at least as e to, you know, n. Uh, I mean, it was the the square of the multiplicity, which is n to two theta over n. So this the norm has to be at least this much times the n power of the capacity. And this is huge if, if theta is bigger than one half, this factor. So some smoothness is needed. And I would like to go back a little bit to, to the adders to run. The adders to run theorem. Um, so the adders to run discrepancy theorem is, is here, OK. Now here, the problem with this is that on, on here, we divide the end power, uh, the, the norm by the end power of the capacity, right? So the norm is compared to two to the minus n, which is the end power of the capacity, but not to the theoretical minimum, because we know that Chebyshev, uh, by Chebyshev's theorem, the theoretical minimum is two times two to the minus n. Uh, you see, you know, it doesn't seem to be a big, a big uh, thing here, but actually it is because, in particular, this theorem never gives a better rate for discrepancy than one over square root of n. Because simply this, this by Chebyshev theorem, this fraction here, what what is here, is always at least two. So here we have something, you know, a constant divided by n. So now you never get a better uh, discrepancy rate than one over square root of n. And uh, the multiplicity cannot be, I mean, what you get from here, a result for the multiplicity, you, you never get a better estimate for the multiplicity than, than square root of n. So that's, uh, and that, that's because it's, it's a little rough that you, you don't compare with the theoretical minimum. And uh, actually, this is what bothered me for a long. Can you give a discrepancy theorem when you compare the norm with the uh, with the uh, theoretical minimum? That is what what should be there. I don't know that, but but uh, I I have the the result for the uh, for the multiplicity. So uh, at least for the multiplicity, the uh, the answer is yes. So if Pn has a zero of multiplicity m, and now I can go back, not you know, I can go down at uh, uh, down to two. The, even a, a double um, uh, root zero will will have an effect on the on the on the norm. So if Pn has a zero of multiplicity m, then then the norm is at least as large as the theoretical minimum, that's from Chebyshev's theorem, times e to constant times m squared over n of before. And conversely, if we have uh, points in minus one, one, and uh, we prescribe multiplicities for them, uh, then there are polynomials Pn such that uh, this point is, uh, is the zero of Pn of multiplicity m and and we have uh, you know, the, the bound from here. And this two that I can put here, two to one minus n, not just two to minus 10. As I said, this is, this is of some importance here, is, is exactly that in this uh, 
uh, Converse result that I had before, you remember that for Jordan arcs, I could put A equal two, and that's two is exactly that, that A. So that, that had some, some effect here. So um, in this sense, you know, now we can go down to, um, to any multiplicity, not just to square root of n. So this, this has information on even if, if mn is n for, I mean, say fourth root of n, et cetera. And this, this would be like uh, one plus one over square root of n, this, uh, this bound. And this is matching. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Okay, thank you, Wilmer. Uh, any questions, comments? Okay, so uh, I just have commented. It's indeed, it's very curious that uh, so dramatic changes goes with estimation from below when you have uh, multiple zero. Yeah. Okay. Let's thank the uh, speaker again. And